All right, guys, I got a 4265E. Uh, this transmission goes in the Impalas, uh, goes in the Grand Prix, uh, goes in the Montana vans, uh, Venture vans. They put it in a lot of, a lot of different vehicles for Chevrolet. Uh, what I want to do is show you how far that converter needs to be back in there before you install this up in the vehicle. Um, and, uh, and I want to talk about this converter. I'm using a, a dynamic converter. That's the name of it. Uh, what you'll notice on this converter is uh, it's not painted. It is an aftermarket converter, but it's not painted. I really like that, that the fact that they don't paint these, uh, these converters with this company because a lot of times you'll buy a painted converter and there'll be two coats of paint on it and you realize real quick, especially if you've been in this business, that uh, there's no way you can cut this weld and replace the clutch inside uh, if you've painted over other paint. So if you see that when you buy an aftermarket converter, if you see where it's been painted twice, you might want to get a hold of that company and just see what's going on because uh, that's not normal. The, the converter, if it was uh, cut in half and a, and a new clutch replaced in it, then uh, you know it should not be have two coats of paint on it. So, uh, but anyway, let's get this started back in here. These here are really easy to check and tell how far you got them back. They're not like other, other torque converters where you can't actually reach behind them. With these, you can actually reach behind them uh, if your fingers are small enough, I guess, and, and feel whether or not that, that converter is all the way back. So we're gonna run it back here. And there you go, it's all the way back. Um, what you can do is just reach right over the top here and feel if you can't get your fingers down in between there because it goes all the way up against the housing. Uh, if you can't get your fingers in between there, then you're, you're all the way back. Now, what I like to do because, uh, uh, of course, I do a lot of these. We do a lot of these, and we know how far it's supposed to be back, and we know what we're looking for. But if you don't know what you're looking for, and, this, you know, and you're uh, trying to get your converter back, and you're putting it up in there, and your converter is not... Um, is not free once you get the transmission up in there and you've tried it two or three times. You know, we're gonna run a, uh, a straight edge across and you'll see, you'll see how far it's supposed to be back. The pilot, the end of that little pilot right there where it, where it tapers over is right at, at the uh, straight edge. So, uh, so that's pretty simple on how far this is supposed to be back. Now we're gonna, uh, we're gonna show you once we get this converter up in there, this transmission up in there, we're gonna show you how loose this converter should be once it's up in the transmission. Uh, there you see, we are right at a half inch away from uh, the, uh, the boss where the, the boat goes into the converter. So um, that's how far it needs to be back. That's where your pilot should be. And once we get this installed up in there, we're going to show you how uh, how loose that converter can be so okay so we're all boated up to the engine ready to go um gonna turn this converter so i can show you uh how loose that converter should be you see that converter lug moving right there when you go to uh boating this up what you'll want to do is line up one boat tighten it all the way in uh run it back out about a quarter or a half turn and then uh, turn your flex plate around to your next boat and put it in and then so on and so forth till you get all three of them in there and, uh, and then tighten them all up from there. So I hope this video helps you and please subscribe.